What's up guys, this is Dr. O from Innovative Dental and I am excited to share with you how we can help you if you're thinking about getting a dental implant. This video is for you. We're gonna show you how to avoid this. What, you're going like, I don't see anything. Let me zoom in and show you what happened. Now do you see that little piece right there? That is a broken part of the implant. So the patient I showed you just recently in a smile reveal, how he had a beautiful smile, a handsome smile, right? After we raised his bite back up, this is that same patient. He also had a broken implant. And I'm gonna share with you why that happened, how to avoid it, uh, how we fixed it. Let's go dive right in right now. So how did it happen? Why would an implant break? Is this common? Is this something I should be worried about? And the reality is, is it's really rare for an implant to break. So thank God for that. But this was kind of a perfect storm of not placing the implant correctly. And I'll explain how they could, uh, whoever placed, I don't know, but how they could have avoided that. And then some philosophy about why the force placed on that tooth was just way too much causing this kind of perfect storm of a broken implant. First off, implant was placed not deep enough. So the the implant itself was placed in bone. Sometimes, you know, if you're not restoring implants, and this isn't a bash against all surgeons, right? Some people place the implant at the right depth. They, they understand restoratively what's going on and why placing the implant at the right depth is important. But this surgeon, whoever placed it, clearly did not place that implant deep enough. And what it did is it created um, a crown that had to be too flat and too direct. It had to go straight out to the sides. And so it had a, the ability to take on a lot of cantilever forces. What we want is an implant that's placed in the bone fully. So A, it's supported by bone, right? If the implant's high, it's supported by your gums, which isn't gonna do anything. But if it's buried into the bone, not only is the titanium holding together, but the bone is holding it together. So that makes that implant really hard to break, um, almost impossible to break. I hate, hate that impossible word, but it makes it almost impossible, right? I can do that. But the uh, then the crown comes off of that more at a trajectory like this, rather than just straight out and creates these uh, really strong, we call them cantilever forces. So that was already bad enough, right? Didn't place the implant low enough, but also placed an implant above, right? That was made with zirconia. I'm gonna create a video about that at some point. So if you wanna you know, learn about why I really don't like zirconia and I choose to not use it unless I have to, subscribe to the channel. I'll, I'll talk about that at some point. I did have that on my list of topics, but this is a zirconia crown placed on the tooth above that hits directly on that front portion, or we call it mesial in dentistry, but mesial portion or front portion of that lower implant crown and what do you think happened, right? The force over time, his grinding and clenching his teeth, like I showed in the previous video, you look at his bite, right? Look at his wear. So his teeth are already getting worn down and then boom, this goes, and I know why the dentist did it. He put a zirconia crown in because he goes, man, this guy's destroying his teeth. Let's put something in there that's indestructible. The reality is the best thing to do would be to figure out why he's destroying his teeth and fix that first, not try to just over strengthen one thing that you just did, right? You just show up and put in a really strong restoration, go, yay, I, I fixed that problem. And no, you created another problem, right? So now as his teeth continue to wear down, because that was never addressed, he puts way too much force in the front portion of this tooth. It breaks the implant. And now we've got a loose crown and a broken implant. So patient comes to me and goes, what am I doing with this? Well, how do we fix it? So let's dive in. Let's go into how do we fix it? I wish it were easy. Um, that's why you want to make sure implants are done correctly. Because if they do fail like this, this is not an easy fix. So we actually had to take the crown off and we had to take the full implant out. So implants, taking them out, most people probably wouldn't enjoy that. I can tell you honestly, I don't particularly love taking implants out. It's, it's uh, complicated, uh, a little bit more involved. You lose some bone in the process. Um, it's not enjoyable for the patient because it's, it's expensive. They don't love it because um, now they got an implant that they paid for and now you got to take it out. So fortunately, I've never had to take one of mine out, um, but it does happen. Uh, and so this one, I took this out for him and then we have to let that heal for a few months, right? We gotta give it some time for that bone to grow back in from the coring out and, and creating that space to remove the implant. I know your guys are like coring out. Yeah, we had to grind around this implant with a special, it's called a trephination burr because that implant's fully integrated into bone. So that bone is locked in, that implant's locked in. I can't just go grab it and pull it. So we have to actually grind the bone around it out to create a core 
and then remove the implant by backing it out on, you know, spinning it back out once we get enough bone off of it. And so now we get this implant out, then we got to let it heal. Then we come back and we place an implant at the proper depth. So we get it fully buried in bone and we raise this bite back up and then we put a new crown on it. And then the last thing is kind of like, how do we avoid this completely? Like, you know, we had shared with you what happened and why it happened, uh, how I fixed it, but how do we avoid this completely? The great news is 3D implant dentistry has been around for a while. Unfortunately, not everybody's adopted it. I've made these comments before and got a little flack for it. That's okay. This channel is about helping patients get the best. So if some dentists don't think I'm right about this, it's okay. Make a video and describe how you're right, right? I think I'm right about this. 3D guided implants are the safest. They're the best. They're the most accurate. They're the, they're the what we should be doing for our patients. I think there'll be a day where if you're doing implants freehanded without a 3D guide and not perfectly placing the implant in the, in the proper angulation and depth and bone because it was all pre-surgically planned in software, uh, then I think it's it's gonna be kind of taboo. Right now it's not, there's a lot of people that go, oh, I can do that, no problem. And yes, probably nine out of 10 times you nail it. But what about that one out of 10 or even one out of 20 that you miss? Just be, it, would a guide fix it? Yeah, probably. So for patients, go to an implant dentist that does 3D guided placements. You're not gonna regret it. You're gonna get a implant that's placed, not, not just one that's not gonna break. I mean, like I told you, that's kind of rare. But you're gonna get one that doesn't trap food. You're gonna get one that comes out of the gums correctly because it was master planned to do that. You're gonna get one that's placed at the right angle to avoid sinuses and nerves and the right depth to get it fully corrected and, and, and avoid, like I said, not going too far and not going too shallow. Those things can happen, right? I, I think there's some, some big value for you to find a dentist that does 3D guided implants. So then here's the good news, right? <laughs> we do that here. So there's lots of places that do, by the way. I, I know that probably some people are going, well, he's just making these videos and these statements just so any, every, you try to convince you to come here. Of course, I'd love to see you here. I think what we do here is awesome. It's fun. It's exciting to see people's lives transformed. We use amazing technology and we try to be as excellent as humanly possible and as technology possible, right? So, uh, but there's tons of fantastic dentists that have this 3D technology. Find one that's doing 3D fully guided implants. That's what it's called. 3D computer guided, 3D fully guided. You can avoid the challenges that this patient had and then also have a wonderful implant that lasts the rest of your life, that you can floss and clean around and looks wonderful. Um, that's what you want, right? You want the tooth that just is healthy and looks right, like it belongs there, and then just you know doesn't destroy other teeth. So that's what, what uh, that will do for you. If you wanna have me do your implant, I'd be honored, I'd love to help you out, but you need to reach out to us first at yoursmiledestination.com. That's where I can connect with you in a virtual consultation. We'll talk about um, what's possible there. We'll give you the cost, right? We have payment options that we'll go over with you to, to make it a reality. And then we'll help you get on to Springfield, Missouri. I'll place your implant and uh, we'll make sure that you're a happy, smiling patient with a healthy mouth. So uh, hopefully this video was helpful. I mean, if you learned something about implants here with some of the visuals and the discussion, please give it a like. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I would love to see you in the next one. I think the next one, you know, I'm not sure, but maybe we're going to talk about another smile reveal. I think that that's, uh, that's always fun. So we'll bounce back and forth between that. I know we've got some live treatments coming up and we've got some live question and answers coming up. So stay tuned for all of that. Otherwise, you know what, guys? Thanks for watching. Keep smiling. It looks good on you.